Erica, before we came to St. Louis, we were watching the Friday show on NHRA, and they were talking about their predictions or the numbers, the sports books. For a person that hasn't won a whole lot of races this year at Pro Stock, you're still favored to win the damn championship. Really? How does that happen? I like it. Uh, that's awesome. I certainly uh, don't feel like we've had our best season, obviously, but we, uh, we started off with a bang. We won the Pro Superstar Shootout in March and then went to Gainesville and won that race, and ever since then it has been a horrible, awful drought. So I am, uh, I'm ready to be back in the winner's circle. We've won, I think, six times at St. Louis, so I'm hopeful that that St. Louis luck falls on our side. How does it fall off? I don't like, know. <laughs> like that. And I understand there's so many literally moving parts, but it wasn't a precip I mean, it fell off. For you. It, it vacated the premises. It was gone. Um, I'm not really sure. I feel like we're doing um, all that we can. We feel like we win races and championships before we leave the shop. We come as prepared as possible. And, um, you know, those races that went our way so many times are not falling our way by a, a thousandth or two here and there. So um, we just got to get on the other side of it and keep our heads down and keep going after it. Um, you know, I definitely feel like I struggled through the summer. Um, I took my car back to Rick Jones, and, and this is a new car for me. So my last four championships, uh, I raced that my last car. So this is a brand-new race car, and just getting comfortable and getting acquainted, I know that probably sounds dumb, but uh, I've been back to the chassis shop a couple times to get it comfortable, and I definitely have a lot more confidence now. So hopefully these last few races in the countdown will, will go well. Aside from it being a new car this year, you are racing in the most competitive class in NHRA. So tell him, tell everybody. I mean, that's a little component of all of this as well. It's so difficult, whether it's getting off the line or it's getting just, what, a thousandth of a second from your competitor. How do you mentally prepare for every single tedious run in pro stock? Well, I think that's what keeps me coming back for more in pro stock is it's a true challenge to drive. We're a clutch car with a five-speed liberty, so you're actually physically having to drive the car. We, we joke and say we don't stab and steer it. We, just, we actually have to go through the motions. I heard that. <laughs> but, Slam um, on nitro? <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. But um, I definitely enjoy the clutch and the shifting aspect of pro stock. And, with the new rev limiter, I say new rev limiter, it was implemented in 2016. So before we could shift at however high we wanted to, now we're limited to 10,500 RPM. So it is extremely crucial to hit your shift points because if you put it on the chip, the G meter falls off, you're killing time. If you pull it too early, you knock the clutch out of it. So it's just an extremely challenging car to drive. And as you mentioned, the class being extremely competitive, you know, everybody's ripping off really great reaction times. And our 16 car field, um, the last couple of races was separated by four and five hundredths of a second between 16 cars. So um, it's crazy. How do you practice that, though? I mean, it's not like your, your daily car. How do you practice shift points like that to be as accurate as you can be coming into a race weekend? So there's a couple different ways. I, I like to sit in my actual race car. They make a simulator that's like it, but I feel like sitting in my actual car is better, and I, I just visualize and go through runs over and over and over. Now, having said that, I'll try to explain something a little more difficult, but it, you, your instruments aren't always correct. Like, your shift light is not always accurate so if you unclutch the car and you can hear it if it's light on clutch well our shift light is run off of engine rpm so it, the clutch is what holds the motor back if the clutch is not enough on the engine the engine is freewheeling so the shift light comes on immediately well you know that's not accurate so you kind of got to wait it out and then i talked about the rev limiter you got to get it before then on the other side of things if you overpower the racetrack and you're shaking the tires you want to grab second gear early before your shift light comes on so it's your instruments are not always accurate it's kind of like seat time drive by the seat of your pants if you will um through the first couple of gears so it's a, definitely a challenging car to drive but that's what i love about it where does the nhra this is a broad question where does the nhra get it right I think um, planning an event and having all the fans here they're the big stage right with tv and whatnot um they give us a great place to race. I think that's where they excel. Where does the NHRA need to improve? Um, we only have 15 minutes, so I'm just kidding. <laughs> no. Um, they, so being in pro stock, we're not nitro. We don't explode. We're not fiery. Um, we've always been the ones that they, they take from. So it's been an uphill battle um, fighting for our place. Um, I don't know if you remember pro stock truck 
the lawsuit years and years and years ago. So we we always feel like we have to fight for our place. We were told um, a few races back that they're going to take over half a million dollars from our purse. Um, and fortunately enough, the Nitro guys rallied for us, and we're, we're going to be good. So um, we all stick together as racers, and, and that's what matters. But, yeah, just uh, actually just fighting for our spot, I guess. They do a great job at a lot of things. It was also announced recently that you, along with several other female drivers, got the NHRA in a headlock and basically <laughs> said, we've got to find a proper driver replacement protocol, pregnancy, Leah Pruitt. How long was that in the works, and how did you contribute to that decision with the NHRA? Well, Leah's been fighting for it for well over a year. Um, she kind of got with me at the end of last season um, and a couple of other girls, and we, we've met throughout um, the off season and then the beginning of the, the races this year and just kind of, like, pulled together to see what we could do. And, you know, Dr. Phil with NHRA was really helpful, and um, we got Josh and, and Glenn on board, and um, it just was kind of one of those deals you just kind of have to keep pushing the marker. But, you know, people... Thank you for being so positive online, by the way. Crash was, like, totally sticking up for us because people were bashing us. But um, it's, a, it's a good thing. And it's not, it's not going to benefit Leah and I because she's already going through it, right? It's, gonna, it's for the next generation of girls. So our job is to make it better for the next. And that's, that's why we did that. You know, we can call it a pregnancy protocol. It's technically and literally a medical protocol because it, it already exists, whether it came from COVID and having drivers being able to replace yep. others. Right now we're seeing it with the John Force racing team and Jack Beckman literally driving for John Force in John Force's seat. So it's a medical protocol and everybody should be able to benefit in the exact same way. Absolutely. So thank you for fighting for it. Yeah, of course. It's, and it's a good thing, again, because, you know, obviously Smoke and Leah, they're probably they've probably bred another race car driver that's in her <laughs> belly. So um, hopefully it goes on for years and years to come. But yeah, that was, that was our goal was just to make it, make it better for the girls. Can I tell you where the NHRA gets it right? Cause you're right. I need about an hour to tell you where they need to improve where they get it. <laughs> Every right. Every racing series is Every, the yeah. diversity in the NHRA, African-Americans, Latinos, yep. uh, Ida Zetterstrom, the, the plethora of drivers and champions yep. in this series, you will not find Anywhere. You, okay. you give me a motorsports that has the wide array of individuals winning championships and winning races, unmatchable. They, they definitely do. And I feel like that starts with the Junior Drag Racing League. Like, we are provided the same platform that the pros race on. You see the junior dragsters out here. They'll probably make exhibition runs, uh, weather pending. But that's where we got our start. And you're able to race on the same tracks in front of the same fans as the pro drivers that you've looked up to your whole life. And then from junior dragsters, you move into the Lucas Oil Sportsman Series. And you can race anything from a 1090 car to a six and a half second top sportsman car so it just gives you the the steps to excel on i feel like and and i i have a lot of friends in other forms of motorsports and they have diversity programs we we don't need one it's it's pretty it's pretty awesome do people still come up to you and ask you about right on track yes I actually had a girl come by our pit this morning she said she's been a fan of ever since she saw the movie and um she showed up in my hat and my t-shirt so it's it's really cool to see i mean and that was released 21 years ago, so I'm kind of aging ourselves. But Yeah, for those who may not be <laughs> aware, we're talking about juniors, and that's basically how you and your sister got started, and then a movie came out with you guys. So that's cool. People are still referencing yeah, that. Yeah, we were your daughter's age when we started. So um, we've done this our entire lives, and Disney put um, my sister and I's life story into a movie called Right on Track. You can still watch it on Disney+. Plus, But um, it just kind of chronicled our, our life up to moving into the Lucas Oil Drag Racing Series. So um, pretty cool to be a part of the the women at Disney did a series of movies about females in male dominated sports so there was us in drag racing there was the twin sisters that played basketball made it to the WNBA that was called double team and then uh, motocross which is about a little girl that raced motocross and she like cut her hair because they were making fun of her and wouldn't let her race and so it's pretty cool to be part of that this freaking segment is brought to you by good friends at General Tires. Now through the end of October, buy four qualifying SUV or light truck tires and get up to $100 back with a Visa prepaid card. Need more information? Go to the website, GeneralTire.com. That's GeneralTire.com. General Tire, the official tire for speed freaks for the last two decades. For more than 30 years, Lucas Oil Products has been solving some of the most difficult mechanical problems in the automotive, marine, and industrial industries. 
from our original Core 4 products. Heavy duty oil stabilizer, power steering, stop leak, transmission fix, and fuel treatment. We have now developed over 400 custom products to help solve some of the world's toughest mechanical issues. Go to lucasoil.com to see what we have in store for you. Lucas Oil. It works. Rev up your passion for speed. Mav TV Go is the ultimate streaming app for race fans. Oh, man! Mav TV Go, your global home of motorsports. Now on the go. Download the app now. Just when you thought the racing couldn't get any more intense, the 2025 NASCAR Cup Series Championship Playoffs are coming. Sunday, September 7th, 2025. Go to www.raceway.com.